Does this sound like you? I was just born shy. There's nothing I can do about my social anxiety. I didn't win the genetic lottery, so better luck next lifetime. In this video, I'm gonna share with you my one top secret brain hack that I've seen help people that struggle with social anxiety again and again and again. Hey, I'm Dr. Sam McDonald. I'm a brain health expert, and this channel is dedicated to helping you rewire your brain so that you can live a better life. If you love this content, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe so you get the notifications for each week's new video. Anxiety in any form can really be devastating, but in my opinion, I really think that social anxiety is the cruelest form out there. You see, as human beings, we're designed to be social creatures, and when you can't go out and have a good time with your friends and make memories, when you struggle really to present your best self in that job interview, or if you fail to connect with that special someone on that first date, it's left a lot of our clients feeling like that they're gonna be just be hopeless, hermits, or recluses for the rest of life. But let me tell you, there is hope. Anxiety begins and ends in the brain, but when we're talking about social anxiety, there can be many triggers for what could be causing it. But the one I really wanna focus on here is gonna be about the eyes. And there's a lot of things I could talk about the eyes, all the different functions and everything that they do, but let's keep it very simple and talk about two really basic things. That's gonna be how your eyes can track and how well your eyes can focus. So when we're in a crowded environment, and really in any environment, our eyes are our primary systems for, for to determining if that environment is safe or dangerous. So obviously you walk into a burning room, your eyes are gonna very quickly determine that there's fire and says this, this environment's dangerous, let's get out of there. Versus you walk into your, your apartment, your home, your bedroom, whatever it may be, and your eyes are gonna pick up that environment and say, yeah, this environment's safe, I know what this place is. So let me give you a scenario of what this is gonna feel like out in a social situation. So let's say we're at the airport and it's a busy terminal and we're heading from security and we're going to our gate. So we're walking and in this big calamity of people, you've got people going left, you've got people going right, you have people coming towards you, you have people going away from you. If you have social anxiety, you're probably feeling some of it come on right now just thinking about how overwhelming the airport is. But think about it, you got these multitudes of people coming from every single direction. And as this is happening, our eyes are constantly looking at every single person and our brain is asking these same questions over and over and over again. Dangerous or safe? Dangerous or safe? So we are walking to our gate and in front of us, there's a woman with blonde hair who walks from our left to our right. Our eyes have to be able to fixate on this woman first and then we track as she walks in front of us and our brain's asking dangerous or safe. From our right hand side, a gentleman walks in front of us and again, our eyes then jump from her to him. And again, dangerous or safe, there's another gentleman in a, in a business suit walking towards us. Again, our eyes then jump from this gentleman to that gentleman, dangerous or safe. And we're constantly jumping from around every single person in this environment, again, asking these same questions, dangerous or safe. And along with that too, now we're also looking at all the other different objects and different things that are in the same environment. So. We're looking at the different information of all the gates on either side saying, hey, this flight's going to Dallas, this flight's going to Los Angeles, that flight's going to Phoenix. And then we're getting on the moving sidewalk so we can get there a little bit faster. And so we're looking at that going dangerous or safe. I need to make sure I get my foot on there and I don't fall or trip or anything. So we're always looking at all these different environmental pieces and all these different movements that are happening in a social situation, asking these same questions, dangerous or safe. And this process is incredibly taxing. You can imagine me just explaining it, how much information and energy our brain has to be able to process and use to do this. So now let's take that same scenario and instead of it being this nice, smooth, easy process, now let's say you have some issues either being able to focus on a person or being able to track them smoothly. So that same situation, we're walking to the gate and now this blonde woman walks in front of us and let's say this time, instead of our eyes smoothly locking on to her and tracking her across the way. Let's say that we overshoot that and now instead of locking onto her face, we accidentally overshoot it and we look a little bit too far to the left. Our brain then tries to overcorrect that and we shoot overshoot to the right until we finally lock onto her face and then watching her track. Same thing happens now, this gentleman walks up on our right hand side, we overshoot that and we look too far and too up until we finally then settle on him. 
Same thing, this gentleman's walking towards us. Then we look too far to the left, we look way too high, we look down too low until we finally catch on to his face as he's coming towards us. Okay, this is what we see a lot with our clients that struggle with social anxiety. They have issues being able to smoothly track things and problems being able to fixate. And when that happens, now our brain is gonna dial up the defensive systems. It's gonna put us into a fight or flight state because our brain cannot properly integrate all the information from the environment in an efficient manner. And when it cannot do that, it has to be able to put itself into defense mode because it says, look, this environment has way too much stimuli for me to process. Everything's coming at me way too fast. I can't process this stuff as efficiently as I need to. So we're gonna put up the defenses because I need to get the heck out of here so I can get into an environment that I can properly tolerate. And that's why you get these anxious feelings is because your brain cannot rapidly keep up with all the information that's coming at you. And that's just in this situation talking about sight. Now we throw in, you've got the noise of all the different people talking, you've got the PA system going, talking about updates and flights, you've got the smells of the different restaurants, maybe some of the other people, and you've got all the colors and everything else too, that's all happening, all these different sensory stimuli coming into our brain while it's asking these questions, dangerous or safe. And this applies in every single situation that we're in. Again, think about instead of you having a good time and being in the moment with your friends at the concert or the restaurant, your brain's not properly tracking and looking at information appropriately. It's too overwhelmed in this sensory stimuli and this rich environment, and it can't keep up. So it's gonna ramp up the defensive systems, and now instead of you having a good time, you get anxiety. You're sitting down for that job interview, and instead of presenting yourself as your best possible self you could be, the confident, competent employee that you know deserves this job, you can't fire your frontal lobes to shut off that stress response, and now your job interview looks like an anxious mess and you present this anxious human being that you are. Or you're in that date and instead of really getting into the moment and connecting with this other person, instead of that, you're not able to block out everything else that's going on, so you're a nervous wreck, your anxiety's through the roof because you're in this environment that your brain can't keep up in. All right, so you need to be able to fix the eyes, fix your ability to track and focus on things appropriately to really get this anxiety under control. And on that note, you should be healthy by choice, not by chance. So for that reason, I will see you on the next video.